Can bass actually see all the different lure colors out there? Hey folks, welcome back to One Cast Fishing, or if this is the first time you're watching, I definitely appreciate it. My name is Ben, and if you're like me, you've got a jig box that may look a lot like this. You've got every single color under the rainbow, and every single shade of that color. And if it's not jigs, it could be soft plastics, crankbaits, or whatever bait you like to throw. But I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a secret. And it pains me to have to say this because as I'm getting out of the army here, I'm taking my tackle business full time. So we've got jigs and soft plastics. We've got various different colors and you can actually design your own color combination when you want for our jigs. And if you, there's a particular color that you, you caught a lot of fish on, keep, keep casting it because there's a lot to be said about confidence. But with all the lure colors out there, they're mostly designed to attract you as the angler and not necessarily the bass. There's a lot less impact that color has when it comes to fishing than you may think. And it comes down to really two scientific reasons and we're going to talk about those today. The first thing we need to look at when we try to understand what colors a bass can see, we need to look at how their eyes operate and how they're constructed. But first, let's take a look at humans. The human eye is made up of photoreceptive cells, and there's rod cells, which help us see under low light conditions, and then there's cone cells. And there's three types of cone cells we have as humans. And these, these cone cells help us see red, blue, and green. We have what's called trichromatic vision. Now, someone who's colorblind, and there's a type of colorblindness called dichromatic vision, only two sets of, their, of that person's cone cells operate correctly. That's why they can confuse colors. They may not see greens very well, they may not see blues very well, etc. Now, when we look at a bass, a bass also have rods and cone cells. But their cone cells, they only have two. And they, they seem to be receptive or responsive to greens and reds. So off the bat, they're diachromatic vision. So if they were human, we consider them colorblind. But that, that tells us that the, the eyesight of a bass, they're not as receptive to all the colors that we are as humans. A couple years ago, researchers at the University of Illinois, New York, took this information and essentially developed what was a colorblind test for bass. They wanted to determine the bass's behavioral response to various color stimuli. So they took young bass, they were only like 12 to 14 inches in length, and trained them to attack specific colors. They trained them to attack reds, greens, blacks, blues, whites, and chartreuses. When they attacked this color, when they were training them, they were given a food reward. After these bass were trained, they then presented these bass with a, another color option. And what they found out was, is that when the bass that were trained to attack red were presented with a, another color option, they still attacked the red color almost 80% of the time. Bass that were designed to attack green, or, or trained to attack green rather, attack green 75% of the time. Now when it comes to blacks and blues, bass that were trained to attack the color blue only did so 48% of the time when presented with another option, and when that option was black, they hit the black color 40% of the time. Now let's take a look at the white and chartreuse. When the bass uh, were trained to attack white, they did so 33% of the time, but when presented with chartreuse next to white, they hit that 30% of the time. So what does this study tell us? Well, it tells us that bass see red and green really well. When it comes to blacks, blues, darker colors like violets, it probably all looks very similar to the bass. So with white and chartreuse, and we make a white and chartreuse bladed jig, it's called the electric shag. I really like it, it's caught me a lot of bass, but in all reality, to the bass, it probably just looks like a big blob of white there. And another conclusion I took is that this seems to be some scientific evidence as to the reason why green pumpkin, a shade of green, has been so effective since really the forever of bass fishing. Now let's go beyond the actual structure of a bass's eye. We need to understand what exactly is color. Color is a light wave that is reflected back to us that we see. So all the colors in the, in, in the visible light spectrum have a different wavelength to them. And so when light hits an apple, all those colors are absorbed by the apple except for the color red. That wave is reflected back into the atmosphere and we see the color red because our eyes are, are tuned in with that particular wavelength. Same thing goes for a blue car, a green, uh, what, a green banana that's not ripe or something. Uh, now the color white, which we consider a color because it's what we see, it's actually the reflection of all the colors. And the color black, it's actually the absorption of all the various types of colors out there, or, or really light waves. Or it's the absence of those light waves because those light waves couldn't penetrate something. So in the physics world, white and black actually aren't colors, but we still see them and that's why we call them that. 
Understanding that light is simply a reflection of a light wave, and that's what we see, is absolutely essential. Now we have to talk about light penetration, particularly light penetration in water. I'm gonna put up a chart over here. And on this chart, you see the visible spectrum of light, the various colors we see, and it's the associated wavelengths. But you also see a depth that corresponds to this. What this chart is showing us is how well various light waves penetrate through water. And this is saying that at 16 feet, the red light wave can't penetrate deeper than that. So the color of red disappears. It becomes and it looks like a black or a dark color to the bass or if you happen to be scuba diving down there. Uh, other colors obviously disappear you know, as deeper and deeper you go down. Now keep in mind, this is ideal conditions. We're talking the middle of the ocean, gin clear, a lot of light in the sky. Some of our lakes may meet this criteria across the country, our really gin clear lakes, but most of, most of our bodies of water won't. It could be muddy, stained, even visibility of seven, eight feet is not these ideal conditions. So that color red, the first color of light to disappear, is going to disappear sooner than that 16 feet. Here in North Carolina, I fish Jordan Lake a whole lot, and it's notorious, very muddy, or very stained, sometimes less than a foot of visibility. So even though they say throw a red crankbait in the spring, when we have that less of visibility, the bass probably aren't going to see the color red deeper than a couple feet, if that. Doesn't mean they won't eat it, right? They're still going to tune into it because it's moving through the water, they're hungry. It's just saying that they, they're not tuning in necessarily to the color red. Other things that will affect light penetration, all right, cloudy skies, there's a less light getting in water, so some of these colors are going to show up at less depths. Uh, fishing matted grass, even if you're out at 10 or 15 feet punching through hydrilla mats, as soon as your bait goes through the canopy, there's no light penetrating down. So some of those colors are going to disappear as well. So that's absolutely key in understanding is light penetration, and the color red disappears the fastest, which is unfortunate because if we go back to the first study, that's the color the bass seem to key in the most. So what does all this mean for fishing and really lure selection? Well, I think it tells us green is the best color. Again, green pumpkin, a shade of green, has been a staple in fishing for a long time. The bass really like the color green, or they can see it or, per or perceive it really well, and it penetrates water. Now red, right, the bass, in some of the studies, probably the bass see red the best, but unfortunately it disappears the fastest, especially under low light and muddy water conditions. When we look at our dark colors, blacks, blues, violets, really dark browns, the bass probably all see those colors very much the same, but it doesn't mean they don't work, because we know they do. But think about it, there's a lot of crayfish or a lot of bait, bait fish that have dark colorations. So even though it may just look like a, uh, the same color to the bass, so does, so does that prey. So it's still going to work. And, and at depth, right? At depth, a lot of the bait fish may lose their color as well, at least to the bass's eye. Uh, white chartreuse, some of those colors are going to blend together as well. I mean, fishing a white and chartreuse jig at 15 feet on the bottom of the water, it, it was probably going to look like, or it may look like, a black and blue jig to the bass. So again, it doesn't mean they're not going to work, but what this tells us is that we can probably limit down our selection of, of colors in, in our toolbox or kit box or tackle box, and we can probably fish a, a variety of conditions with the same colors because the bass may not tell that much of a difference between them. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, you follow, you like, comment, you know the whole deal. You guys have been watching social media content for a long time, but I would definitely appreciate it. Hopefully soon my boat will be fixed. I'll be able to get out in the water, do a few more of these educational things, and, and just go out and film some fishing too. But I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Remember, go out there and fish, and at Lunker, it's one cast away.